All right. Good evening, Council and citizens. I now call the October 17th, 2023 meeting of the West Richland City Council to order at 6 p.m. Get rid of this feedback. Um, as both the mayor and mayor pro tem are unable to attend this evening's meeting, council will need to elect a chair pro tem to chair tonight's meeting. Council member Fetto and council member Smart have both volunteered. Council, do I have a motion to elect a chair pro tem? I move to elect Council Member Smart as tonight's pro Mayor Pro Tem. I'll second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we'll give Council Member Smart an opportunity to go sit at the uh, mayor's spot of the dais. I'll, I'll need some coaching. <clears throat> and do I have to push to talk on this microphone or not? No. I get the privilege of not having to push the button. That's awesome. Let me sign this real quick and... Uh, on double duty there. Okay, so uh, Stephanie, please read the uh, hybrid meeting ground rules and then the roll call. All right, thank you. Tonight's meeting will be held in person with a virtual meeting component. If you are participating virtually, please make sure the name shown at the bottom of your video view is the name you would like the chair to use. You can change this by right-clicking on your video view and selecting rename. Audience members present in the council chambers will be called upon first during public comment periods. Those participating remotely should virtually raise your hand if you wish to speak. To virtually raise your hand, click on participants and then click on raise hand. If you are participating by phone only, press asterisk nine to raise your hand. Please limit all comments to three minutes. All right, roll call. Richard Bloom. Here. David Fetto. Here. May Hayes. Here. Kate Moran. Present. John Smart. Here. Ken Stoker. Here. And Mayor Gary is out of the country on ECA business and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Brink is um, out of the state, but also un uh, not feeling well this evening. So unable to attend virtually. So council, can I have a motion to excuse both uh, Mayor Pro Tem Brink and Mayor Gary? So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Signed. Uh, the uh, motion passes and we'll excuse them. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's see, we've done the roll call, but I uh, do not recall who did the Pledge of Allegiance last. Anybody recall? I will. I think I did. And, then I, and the next question is, which order do we go in? <laughs> uh, it looks like Kate volunteered. So let me ask Kate Moran to, uh, Council Member Moran to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilmember Moran. Um, so first we'd like to, uh, the agenda is before you. Uh, we need to change our executive sec session to a different topic. So it's now pursuant to. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so that's that yeah. Should not be in it's script, on my right? on my cheat sheet. So <laughs> I just started reading that. Okay. There are lots of changes being made. I apologize. There's lots I missed of, that. That's okay. Um, so let's see. We have no presentations tonight. Uh, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, do we have a? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So does. I move to approve the agenda. Thank you, Council Member. Second. Blue. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. 
Okay, so we have a uh, approval of the agenda. That was, okay. So now we're looking at uh, the presentations. We have no presentations tonight, so we'll move to the consent agenda. On tonight's consent agenda, <clears throat> we have payment of the bills, 6A, 6B, approved minutes, regular meeting of October 3rd, 2023. 6C is resolution 6723 relating to surplus equipment. 6D is resolution 6823 waiving competitive bidding requirements for South 38th Avenue water main break emergency repairs. Item 6E is resolution 6923 authorizing the mayor to execute transportation impact fee mitigation agreement for the plat of Red Mountain multi-use phase one. Item 6F is Resolution 7023, authorizing mayor to execute ILA regarding aerial photography and orthophoto mapping with Benton County. Item 6G is Resolution 7123, setting public hearing date to consider the petition for a frontage improvement waiver on Van Giesen, it's SR 224, lot number one of uh, ROS number 5323. Item number 6H is motion authorizing the mayor to execute amendment number one to engineering service contract with PBS uh, State Route 224 Red Mountain Project. Item 6I is a motion to authorize the mayor to execute purchase and sale agreement amendment for the Benton REA. 6J is a motion to approve uh, Monsito supplement to Civic Plus contract. Uh, item 6K is a motion to authorize the Commerce Climate Planning Grant application. Um, item 6L is a motion authorizing the Chief of Police to sign and ratify the ILA with the WTS WTSC for participation in the 2024 HVE 5124 Region 14 Target Zero Task Force Grant Project. And item 6M is a motion authorizing the law enforcement pursuant techno pursuit technology grant application. <clears throat> Moving on, item 6 uh, N is a motion to amend the lease agreement with Financial Consultants International Incorporated for police vehicle radios. Uh, is there anyone in the audience uh, who would like to comment on the consent agenda? If so, please come to the podium and uh, state your name and address for the record. And is there anybody, seeing no one, is there anyone attending virtually who would like to comment on the consent agenda? If so, please raise your virtual hand. City clerk will then unmute you, state your name and city of residence for the record and provide your comments. Press nine to raise your hand and via telephone. Uh, Stephanie, do you see anyone? virtually i do not there so there are no public comments uh can i have a motion to approve the consent agenda move to approve the consent agenda as presented in all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign sounds like the ayes have it consent agenda is passed thank you council uh, citizen public comment. We now have our first opportunity for citizens' comment for items not on the agenda. If you wish to provide comments, uh, come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. You will have three minutes to provide your comments. Please remember that council is not able to respond to questions during this comment period. So for items not on the agenda, this is citizens' first opportunity to make comment. I see no one in the in the personal audience here tonight, is there anyone online that would like to make comment? Stephanie, do you see anyone raising their hand? I do not. So if there's no one to uh, <clears throat> raise their hand um, and comment, we will move on to ordinance resolutions, motions, and public hearings. Uh, First is a public hearing on the roadway frontage improvement waiver for Van Giesen, State Route 224, uh, North 58th Place, uh, 5811 Van Giesen. 
So items 8A and 8B are public hearing <clears throat> and a resolution regarding a frontage improvement waiver for property on Van Giesen located at 5811 Van Giesen. Public Works Director Roscoe Slade will present the staff report. Thank you. So I don't know what the, this has been an exceptional year for the number of frontage waivers and they continue. We just had another public hearing. I'll be very pleased when we finish the improvements on Van Giesen and hopefully these will die down. Uh, what you have tonight is a frontage uh, public hearing for a frontage waiver improvement, um, 5811 West Van Giesen. Uh, this has to do with change of use occupancy of an existing building on the property. Um, the prop It's a corner <laughs> lot, so it's both Van Giesen and South 58th Place, and there's a vicinity map in your packet. Um, the property owner uh, submitted a petition for a frontage improvement waiver dated August 25th of this year. Uh, council passed resolution 5823 adopting on September 19th, adopting tonight as the night for the public hearing on the matter. Um, councils or staffs reviewed the petition and you can see the recommendation dealing with Van Giesen. It's very similar to what we've done on other frontage on Van Giesen. Staffs recommending approval, but uh, conditioning the Van Giesen with them uh, granting a 10 foot wide temporary construction easement. And that's so that uh, behind the sidewalk with those improvements that we complete with the Van Giesen project can blend into their uh, property. Um, so that's with the Van Giesen, that's, that's pretty much consistent what we've done along Van Giesen with the other ones. There's no additional right away that's needed. So that's why you don't see that with that one. Uh, the second part of it with uh, South 58th place is a little more complicated uh, and staff took a deep look at this one. Uh, South 58th place is basically 40 feet of uh, road right away that was deeded years ago. And it consists of basically a dirt road. I, I wouldn't say it's, there's some gravel there. Um, accesses several homes and it also is accessed to our uh, Brotherhood Reservoir. We use that for access to that. Um, it didn't look like it made sense to uh, for a full uh, city local roadway street where you've got 36 feet of pavement, curb gutter, sidewalk, street lights. That seemed like an overkill. It seemed like it was more like a private access rather than a future city road. Um, and so staff's recommending that it very similar to what we have out in section six and section eight, if we don't do a, a city street standard that we follow the international fire code uh, for that access along their frontage which again, instead of doing 36 feet curb gutter, sidewalk, street lights, um, and storm drainage, they're basically doing a 26 foot wide asphalt pavement with a roadside ditch along their frontage. And so that's kind of the uh, staff's recommending the waiver, but uh, requiring those improvements. Uh, this one's a little different because it's a change of use. We don't want to delay the business from occupying the building because this will take time to do the design and construct that. And we are heading into winter. And so we put some language into that that would allow them to bond it and give them a year to complete those improvements on 58 so that they could occupy the existing building uh, as soon as possible. So uh, you've got the recommendation for you. The property was posted. Notices sent out to uh, budding property owners. I did not receive any comments. Stephanie, did you receive? So we haven't received any comments on this uh, petition for waiver. Thank you, Roscoe. Um, so now we'd like to open this uh, to for the public hearing at uh, 614 PM. We will hear in-person comments and then virtual attendee comments. If you are in the audience, wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. You will have three minutes to provide your comments. Seeing no one in our audience, uh, I will ask if there's anyone attending virtually who would like to provide a comment. <clears throat> if so, please raise your hand, your virtual hand. Uh, the city clerk will unmute you and you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Please begin with your name and city of residence for the record. Press nine to raise your hand via telephone. Stephanie, do you see anyone with their hand raised? I do not. That's the case. I will close the public hearing at 
we could wait for another couple seconds and it will be 6 15 p.m uh and then um if there's yeah and so there's no there were no comments uh at this point do we get to allow um yeah a motion yeah it's not on here so so council uh do i hear a motion to approve ordinance eight or are we going to wait to do this both at the same time stephanie it's the next one down oh do i have a motion? i i move to approve resolution 72 uh, 23 granting frontage improvement waiver for the frontage improvement to Van Giesen State Road 24 and South 58th place with conditions. Second. Have any uh, questions that were not previously addressed in the staff report provided? Yes. Mr. Fedda. Thank you. Roscoe, just a really quick question. <clears throat> What's the recourse should they not get this completed in one year's time? Uh, so they can't take occupancy until the improvements are completed or until they put up a performance bond. So no different than a developer coming in, uh, we'll put the bond up. And so that way, if the improvements don't get completed, then uh, you have a bond performance bond to go after. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Questions or comments? All right. So given that, um, I uh, I have my hand up. Your hand up. I'm sorry, Richard. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, Roscoe, what the uh, what's the reason for the 26 foot um, fire access road rather than 20 foot? The city's fire official uh, informed me with the international fire code. When you have a fire hydrant on a access, you need to have 26 feet there so the the that's the difference why it's not 20 feet it's 26 because the fire hydrant and thank you there there may be a typo in the staff report of the resolution <laughs> i think i've got south and north about six different ways so it is north 58th place and we'll get that cleaned up as a scriber's error on my part so apologize for that So with that uh, potential correction, um, we have a motion on the table. Uh, any other comments or questions? Okay, so um, in, uh, and we'll ask uh, all in favor to say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution passes. Thank you, council. Uh, unfinished business, we have no unfinished business this evening. And new business, we have no new business. So now it's time for uh, the second opportunity for citizen public comment. If you wish to provide comments, uh, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes to provide your comments. Seeing there's no one in the audience, we'll ask the same for the virtual community. Uh, if there's anyone virtually that would like to provide a comment, uh, please Raise your hand, your virtual hand. If this, and when the city, when you do so, the city clerk will unmute you, and you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Please begin with your name and city of residence. For the record, press nine to raise your hand via telephone. Stephanie, do you see anyone raising their hand? I do not. On then to staff and council announcements, reports, and comments. Uh, staff reports. If there are any staff that have comments or announcements, please uh, take your turns. And we'll start with Eric. Just a quick uh, note. So we had initially informed the community that we we're going to have a hearing tonight. It was never published for tonight for the cannabis text amendment, uh, just because as, as you look around the room, there are several empty seats on the dais. So that was pushed out to November 7th. So that public hearing will be on the 7th. Public notice will be going out uh, tomorrow uh, for that. So people can be on the lookout to see that um, and, and have the meeting on the 7th. So will that meeting include a vote or or just a public hearing? That will be just the public hearing. Uh, the following council meeting, there'll be, I'm sure you'll have more discussion on that. And if there's any questions that come up during the hearing that you want to have staff research and answer, that'll give us time to do that.
So council, I'll give you an update on the activities of the South 38th water main break, sent the email out with the staff. I mean, we're, we're still getting nice calls. So uh, from residents thanking staff <laughs> for getting that road open, uh, fingers crossed. Like I said, we did some temporary repairs to hopefully get us through winter. We're monitoring it daily in the traffic control. So hopefully it'll hold together so we can get the repairs made uh, next spring. Uh, the other thing is I don't have a date yet for the Keene Road bombing range. Everybody's on pins and needles. Uh, the official thing is was October. We're still in October. Um, the last thing is uh, signal heads. For whatever reason, uh, rolled aluminum or aluminum castings uh, are tough to come by. Um, but the last thing I got was they are on a truck from Laredo, Texas, heading this way. And so... Once they're in our possession, uh, we know it's three days to get them up and do the final thing. All the other work is ready. We're ready to open it. So once uh, I have, I, I just don't want to go buy a ship date. I want to I want to have them in my hands, and then we will put the notice out on social media and let everybody know when they can expect that intersection to be open. And, and right now it's looking, we're going to make October, but it, I'll, I'll give it more date certain when I, like I said, get them in my hands. So Because that, that's one project we're all going to be very grateful to be done with, so coming a few more a few more weeks to be patient any other uh staff comments seeing none i'll ask uh, council if they have uh, comments announcements reports that's my member moran thank you so this friday is the next meeting for the benton franklin council of governments our board meeting will be happening starting at 10 a.m it is a virtual meeting for all those that would like to attend in person or online um i don't know uh commander kelly were you going to be discussing halloween events at the police department yeah commander Coates is working on that so we do have a bunch of candy that's been donated to us so um He's got the decorations and costumes and all that. So it's moving. It's moving along. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, other than that, folks should have received their voters guides and mail. And if you haven't, you hopefully should soon. Uh, please contact Benton County Elections if you haven't. And please, I recommend folks ensure that their registration is up to date so that they are able to vote in this upcoming election in November for whomever they choose. Thank you. Council comments? Oh, Bloom. Oh, sorry, Richard. You're it's just a little eighth inch dot on my screen here. So <laughs> yes. Um I just wanted to uh uh make a comment that and Franklin Transit's um service plan adjustments out for review. Uh what's significant is the 110 uh route through West Richland is being proposed to basically terminate at the new um, Queensgate uh, uh, transit center that's being constructed. So the good news is it means we'll get more rapid service to uh, through West Richland. Uh, they're proposing probably every half hour type of service, which in some adjustments in the routes uh, possibly to improve the other uh, service we have, especially down in uh, uh, Brotherhood. So uh, look forward to it. They're, they're having some public meetings on it. Um, the West Richland adjustments uh, are still being worked out a little bit, but there, there are going to be minor adjustments to uh, better serve the community. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Um, all right. Any other staff or council comments? Oh, I have one other thing. Uh, this is um, the uh, Veterans Center over in Pasco has now been dedicated as a, um, a via stop, which means uh, it can get direct service to the center to pick up from the center. Uh, with the VIA, which is the connect service that we have. So, yeah, so the bed center being so far away from the existing bus system. Excellent. All right. Any others? 
So I will put on my uh, councilman's hat for a moment and make a quick statement. I just wanted to um, again emphasize as we approach this coming election, uh, how important it is for um, our citizens to uh, get out and vote. Um, I think it's uh, important to know, um, you know, the, the positions of the people you're voting for. It is that we are in a representative republic. It's your opportunity as a, as a citizen, a resident of West Richland to um, make your voice clear. And uh, so I just want to em emphasize that everyone should um, do their homework and, and, and come out and vote. It's not unimportant. It, uh, it changes uh, how the city is run ultimately, even if just a little bit. Um, and I think it's just good practice. And it's an excellent example to set for your children, if you have them, uh, to learn how to be participants in, in our government. Um, I, I like to point to our mission statement in West Richland, uh, that um, first bullet point is um, a very important one. We provide a safe, healthy, welcoming city where people choose to live and raise a family. And uh, we have issues in this community that will affect that statement uh, coming up as uh, as Mr. Mendenhall mentioned uh, in, in early November. And I would encourage our citizens to pay close attention to that um, issue and really all the issues that come before the council and the city. Uh, it's, it's, it's the citizen city. Um, we try to represent you and we try to um, be true to our mission statement and vision statement. So uh, with that, it's the end of my comments and um, barring any other final com comments, I will mention that there is no executive session tonight and we will conclude the uh, meeting at 6.27 p.m.